And pursuant to the bylaws of the town of Conway, the minimum number of voters being present constituting the quorum is 25, which I can visually confirm and declare. Therefore, the meeting is called to order. My name is Nick Fuller, and I'm the newly elected moderator of the town of Conway. Uh, before we start with the formalities of the meeting, I just want to introduce uh, some of the dignitaries that are here with us this evening. Uh, first of all, John O'Rourke is to my immediate right, uh, the chairperson of the board of the select board, along with Bob Armstrong and Bob Baker. Okay. Now, Tom Hutchinson, Hutchison is our town administrator. Is that the correct title? And Jenny Knowlton is hiding somewhere. There she is. <laughs> Our town clerk. Okay. Also here, Ken Wamet, somewhere, way in the back, uh, chief of police. And we all know that he's here to escort anyone out if uh, they have dis <laughs> strong disagreements with the moderator. <laughs> I assume that Ron Sweet was here. And I, yep, way in the back also. And our fire chief. Right up here in the front. I think that's a, yeah. So there may be members of the finance committee. Oftentimes they're seated there, but they don't seem to be tonight. Any in the finance committee? Anybody here? Yeah. Oh, there. Okay. Right. Okay. What we probably don't uh, have great need for the school committee members tonight because I don't think there's anything much on the agenda relating there to. So the. Uh, Chairperson of the select board would like to say a few words before we actually read the warrant and start the meeting. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you all for being here tonight. Uh, it should be a relatively short meeting. Uh, everybody should have received a copy of the warrant in the mail. Uh, uh, basically, I have a couple of uh, very important announcements to make first off. Uh, we have Frontier Community Access Television here recording the meeting tonight. We have Alyssa and Esther. They do a great job recording these meetings as well as our select board meetings and other selected committee meetings in town for people to view later on. Um, they, they do such a good job that I've gotten comments from people in other towns that say they watch our meetings, especially our select board meetings, and they like them. <laughs> I can't imagine why, but, but they like them. Kate French has some cookbooks left over from the anniversary celebration. She's got the last box of these cookbooks outside. They're $12 each. They're really good. So if you want, pick one up on the way out. Also, George Forger uh, up on Pine Hill Road is uh, the, haunted, the Haunted Night is on tomorrow night at 5.30. So for those of you who do, have done it in the past and think it's not being done anymore, it's being done tomorrow night. The what? The Rag Shag Parade for the Children uh, is in the town hall tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. That's always fun for the kids. I want to thank uh, our town administrator, Tom Hutchison, and uh, Lisa Tarowski. Where's Lisa? Lisa. Uh, for doing a great job on the warrant, uh, making sure it was mailed out plenty of time for everybody to read it. Uh, I want to thank the planning board for all the work they did on Article 1. Mary, where are you? Okay. Uh, at our annual town meeting uh, in May, um, I mentioned that state revenues for the last quarter of 2017 and fiscal year 2017 were a little lower than expected. Uh, we just got good news that the uh, first quarter of fiscal year 2018 is above expectations. So uh, we're not expecting any stress on local aid to the town. With that, um, let me make one more comment. I was at a, at a, uh, at a meeting last week, a town meeting, 
uh, at a town with about 12,000 residents who had gone to electronic voting, where everybody got a, a device to, to vote yay or nay, and they put the, the Warren article on the screen, and they'd see the number of votes being tallied in the 30 seconds they're allowed to vote. And then at the end, the graph would come up for the yays and the nays. Uh, very interesting process, but it was such a quiet meeting, it was very boring. <laughs> and since we have the best moderator in all of the Commonwealth here with us, Nick Filler, we don't need electronic vote. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, well with that I'll do some talking about how we're going to vote for things so you all know what the rules are. But first I'd like to preface it by saying that uh, I'm reminded running in this meeting of a story that's attributed to Casey Stengel. Now, as I look out over this audience, a fair number of you are probably old enough, like I am, to at least heard the name Casey Stengel, who was a manager, in the, uh, a baseball manager, and he said... New York Yankees baseball. Yes. I didn't want to mention that, that name. All right? I, uh, I'm not... Uh, familiar with the team that you were referring to, but uh, anyway, he was said that uh, managing a baseball team is uh, basically, uh, the skills uh, involved there are keeping the, uh, the four people that hate your guts away from the five the others that are relatively indifferent. Okay? And that's a little bit like running the town meeting, too. So, <clears throat> we're going to... Uh, run this with a couple of rules, just so you understand that the critical rules are that, you know, the motion has to be made, it has to be a second on most motions of any consequence. And then we open up for discussion. There's, you, you are recognized by raising your hand. You don't just start talking, you don't just stand up. Uh, because if you do that, I won't recognize you, I'll recognize someone else. And then <clears throat> you try to limit your conversation with us with the rest of us to a few minutes, stating your position, because you may find that just about, if you, if you don't say anything at all, I think you'll find just about everything you were going to say gets said. That's what I've observed over time. And uh, so, so you speak briefly. Then uh, someone else gets a chance, and we try to, I try to run the meeting so that uh, someone doesn't speak twice on something, on an issue, without everyone else having, who wants to speak to that issue having already spoken. Unless, of course, it's in response to a question asked of the prior person. Now, there's a couple of <coughs> ways of, uh, of ending the discussion. One is when I get a sense that you've talked yourselves out, I'll call, I'll ask first, are we ready to vote? And then we'll call for a vote. In most cases, it's a majority vote. Where it isn't a majority vote, I'll tell you, It'll be either a two-thirds, in some cases, a four-fifths vote, nothing that we have today. Two-thirds occasionally, and then we vote. We vote by voice here in Conway still. Some places feel that that's not an appropriate way, but because of my finely attuned ear, I still go with voice uh, votes. Unless I'm a little confused by how close it is, then you all have your little yellow, are they yellow? Cards uh, that you hold up. Now. The second way of ending the discussion is to move the question. Again, you have to be recognized. If you shout out, I move the question, I'm guaranteed to not hear it. that, okay? Um, and uh, so it's like what Warren Buffett uh, says to people who want, who are calling him all the time to buy their businesses, you know, to have uh, his company, Berkshire Hathaway, buy the business. And he says, you know, don't call me because you'll know if the phone don't answer, don't, don't ring, you know it's me, okay? So I'm not going to answer to a, a called out motion to, to move the question. Raise your hand, I recognize you, you say, I move the question. That immediately stops the discussion for a minute. No discussion about that. And we vote, majority vote, on whether or not to continue the discussion. That is not a discussion for or against whatever we were discussing, it's a, it's a vote just to stop the discussion. Similarly, if you move, if you're recognized and you move to table uh, a question, tabling a question is a little different in that we will stop. There won't be any discussion of what tabling means because I'm telling you what it means right now. 
we will then have a vote, a majority vote, to either table or not table. If you want the discussion to be over and to not even vote on the main motion, you vote yes to table it. That means we put it on the table, it means we sort of just, it's done for the night. Technically, a tabled motion can be brought up again later in the meeting, okay? So that's how it's done. If, on the other hand, you vote against tabling the motion, you can still vote against the motion when we vote on it later on, okay? So you get sort of two bites of that apple if you're against it. Um, so, now, uh, <clears throat> I think that uh, that's the basic rules that you need to know about. Um, so, oh, one more thing, any person who's not a registered voter in the town of Conway needs to be voted in to speak. So if you are recognized by me and I don't recognize that uh, you're not a town uh, registered voter, you've got to identify that, we'll have a quick vote. Uh, we've never not voted to let someone speak, uh, and then they can speak. Okay? Any questions about the rules? All right. So, we're going to take the... Yes? Could you stand up and just identify yourself for your neighbors? Stephen Baker, Williamsburg Road, I guess. Can you move to end the discussion or table? Does that have to be seconded? Does that have to be second? I got a cheat sheet right here. Yeah. Motion to limit debate, uh, second, yes. Motion to table, yeah. lay aside, yes. Yes, needs a second. It's got to be at least two people that want to uh, table or, uh, or uh, move the question. Any other questions? Good question. Okay, so first thing we have to do is we have to read the entire <coughs> warrant, unless Somebody would like to suggest that we so wave the reading. So we'll move. In a second. A second. Okay. We'll wave the reading. Uh, but so we'll, and we'll go right to it. If you don't mind, Jenny, not reading the whole thing. Okay. So we'll see. Is there uh, someone that wants to start out with Article One with a motion? Mr. Yeah. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town of Conway amend the town's zoning bylaw by adding a new section 11 temporary moratorium on recreational marijuana establishments as printed in the warrant. Mr. Moderator, comment. This was sent out, this sheet was sent out, an informational sheet on uh, Article 1 with everybody's warrant. Uh, this is meant to give uh, the planning board time to assess the state regulations which are due March 15th and to hold public hearings on proposed zoning for commercial marijuana operations, production, distribution, and retail. The Cannabis Control Commission uh, will be governed uh, in granting licenses by bylaws in effect at the time of application. Applications begin April 1, 2018 before the next town meeting, not leaving any time for local zoning. Okay, a motion has been made. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Motion has been made and seconded. Discussion? Mary. I just, I was playing, thanks, John, John. I was just playing. Mary, can you stand up the microphone? So the folks at home can hear it? Like he said, basically the state regs don't come out to March 15th. Applications become due on uh, open on April 1st. We wouldn't have time to add any additional regulations beyond what the state regulations were, um, unless we have we hit the pause button with this. Basically, what this is is buying time for local control. It may be that the state regulations are perfectly fine, and we'll look at them and say, "Great, that's exactly what we need." Um, and at that point, we would lift the moratorium. Or maybe we look at them and say, well, there's some other things that Conway wants to address. And then we'll um, go through the usual zoning bylaw process um, with public hearings um, and votes to, um, to add things to the, the rules. Are there questions for Mary before she sits down? Okay. Yes, Stan, state uh, your name, please. Jim Bosman, uh, Academy Hill. So it's two-thirds vote to amend the bylaws, or is it a yes. simple majority? Two-thirds. Two -thirds. 
And so to, to make the temporary moratorium, it's going to be two-thirds. And to undo it or put in some other change to Section 11, it's going to be another two-thirds. Right. And that will be an annual town meeting next May, would it? Is that your plan for the annual town meeting? That depends on what happens with the with the state. You know, although the uh, Cannabis Control Commission is supposed to have all this work done by April 1st, uh, the fact of the matter is there are so many questions on it, it may not be done by then. So we'll have to play it by ear as we get closer to our annual town meeting. Other discussion? Mayor? Well, we've got someone here that hasn't spoken to this. Uh, Stephen Baker. Um, uh, I have no interest in any commercial venture, but it seems to me that uh, if we delay any kind of commercial ventures until. Can you go to the mic? Can you hear Um, it, it seems to me in reading this that if the town waits until after the uh, Cannabis uh, Commission, Control Commission, promulgates something, and I'm assuming that there's not going to be any kind of uh, information released by them before the final report is released, so that we could have a head start on coming up with stuff. It seems to me that um, waiting until April, or whenever, I, that's my reading of this, really puts anybody who really intended to do anything in terms of growing or whatever behind the eight ball with regards to the rest of the state and if they're going to do anything outside the growing season. So I think that either the definition should be uh, looked at to take that kind of consideration into account, or um, maybe this shouldn't be approved. Okay, are there any other comments to make? Discussion? Yes, Tom. Uh, Tom Lesser, South Park Road. I'm a little confused, actually, about what the concerns are. The fact of the matter is, if we had a dispensary in town, it would bring in with a 3% tax and a 3% community impact fee, about $100,000 a year into the town coffers. I, for one, would be ecstatic to get that kind of money into the town of Conway. So I'm not sure what the concerns are since the statute addresses issues like surveillance, like public safety, like advertising. But the fact of the matter is, if we want something like that, we shouldn't adopt this regulation. The second part of the reality of it is, I'm a lawyer, I represent a number of people who are applying for licenses. There's virtually no possibility that anyone is going to open a dispensary in Conway. The most we're going to have is we're going to have people who are growing marijuana or growing hemp according to state regulation. So I don't think it's something that's necessary. I think it's something that we'd like to have farmers have the opportunity to grow marijuana and I, for one, would be in favor of tabling at this point. I'd move to table. Second. Motion's been made to table the, this uh, and seconded. So we're going to vote on it. This is a majority vote. We're not voting on the main motion, just on whether to put it aside for another day, which means that there'll be no moratorium going into effect uh, if we table this motion. Is that everybody clear? Okay, all those in favor of tabling the motion indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. Aye. Okay, we're gonna, kind of, we're gonna count, make sure. Okay, now I need tellers. I need two tellers on each side. Who's gonna volunteer to be counters for me? 
I need two, two people to count on this side. One, someone else to be a counter. It's not that hard a job. Gene, okay, Gene. <coughs> two over here to count this side. We got two people we'll count. Counters, come on. I got one. Another one? Two. Okay. Cindy. All right. All those in favor of tabling the motion, stopping the discussion, putting it aside, not voting on it, raise your cards up and hold them up high until the counters have counted. Now, counters, you have to agree with your fellow counters. Keep them up on my left side here, they're still time. Okay, put them down. Just a second, we'll vote the other side. 27. Okay, all those who want to keep on talking or vote on the main motion, hold up your hand. Count, counters. This side can put your hands down. Keep, this side, keep them up because they're just confirming. We had 40, uh, 44 votes in favor of tabling. We'll see how many we have in favor of continuing. 43. Hmm. 43. <laughs> Sixty-one want to keep on talking, so clearly. So, all right. Any other uh, discussion? Go. I'd like to address a common comment. Um, Joe Stogrowski, uh, vice chair of the planning board. Um, back in November of last year, you all voted on the referendum. Everybody in Franklin County voted in favor of the marijuana retail sales. Uh, then it got sent to the legislators and they tinkered with it a little bit, changed the rules again. And now they're sending it to the Cannabis Control Commission and they're going to tinker with the rules a third time. We're asking for a fourth time, which is to look at the rules and then see if they fit with the town of Conway. I don't believe that's unreasonable. I agree with Tom that the chances of one showing up in Conway is probably fairly remote. But if it does, Tom has been one of the people has been most critical of things that have happened in Conway. He's come to me and said, oh, that building should have never gone up in Conway. So this is an opportunity for the planning board to look at the rules and say, hey, maybe, maybe a 10,000 or 20,000 or 40,000 square foot building to grow marijuana inside needs a special permit. That may not come out in the bylaw. 
and, and the, the, the state or by state regs. So we just want a chance, six months or till the end of uh, 2018, to look at those and make recommendations, come back here and talk to you people about that. See if you want to change the bylaws or leave them the way the state pro uh, proposed them. Yes, sir. Uh, um, I'm just wondering if there is any bylaws on building such a commercial building like that in town already. Not maybe this reason, but our bylaw is what I call the 1550 bylaw. Unless you have 15 employees or 50 customers, you can do it by right. There's no limitation that I can see on the side of the building. So unless these people are going to have more than 15 employees, they wouldn't need a special permit. So, so what is the reason why we need to limit those people? What, what limitation would you put on them and what, what would the suggestion be? What are, what are the rules in the law that people haven't figured out, aren't good, won't work? I don't know the answer yet. We don't have the law. That would be my question. Well, the law has been there. It's been written. We all voted on it. 65% of us did. Okay. Other comments? You ready to vote? Okay, this is a two-thirds vote. Is that right? That's what I have to say. So we're going to do it. We might as well do it by... Hands, obviously so all those in favor of the moratorium, of putting everything on hold, uh, signify by raising up your cards and counters, count again. All those in favor of the moratorium, signify you need to have two thirds of you need to, to uh, say yes for this to pass. Okay, they agree. All right. What do you got? Okay, all done. Now, all those who oppose the mor moratorium, hold your hands up high. Counters? So there were 70 ayes and 34 nays for a total of 104. So, 104 times 0.667 is 69, and it passes with 70. So the moratorium is in effect. Where's uh, Peter, the mathematics professor here? We agree? All right? Okay. Wow. 
69 needed, 70 votes, uh, ayes for it. It passes. Okay, is there a motion on uh, Article 2? Mr. Moderator, I move that the town transfer $35,514.90 from free cash for the debt service for the new fire truck. Comment? Uh, is there a second? Second. Second. This is a majority vote. It's not coming out of it's free, free cash. Free cash. Um, okay. This, this um. is for the first five years of the debt service, and it was inadvertently left off of the town meeting warrant um, in, um, in May. Okay. Is there a discussion on this $35,500 event? Yes. Uh, Jim Bosman, Academy Hill Road. How much free cash is there? Uh, Con Conway's free cash, is this on? No. no. Conway's free cash, oh, is this just going to the, the video feed? Uh. <coughs> Conway's free cash was recently certified at $2,000. $685. Uh, sorry, $208,685. If we spend all of the free cash that is proposed at this town meeting, that would be spending $42,342.45. Uh, and that would leave us in May with $166,000. $342. Dana. Uh, do we have the option of not passing this? I mean, if we don't pay it, we go in default, right? This is a formality, Dana, basically. Yeah. 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 OK. So I'll come and repossess our fire truck if we don't uh, Ready to vote? Yes. Given that, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous. Is there a motion on Article 3? Mr. Moderator, I move that the town transfer $6,000 from free cash for matching funds for a grant to help move the town toward compliance with the Americans with Disabilities Act. Is there a second? second. Discussion. Uh, the town has the opportunity to apply for an implementation grant which would pay 60% of the cost of renovation for the purposes of making its buildings more accessible. A recent assessment estimates 25,000 in needed upgrades outside of a lift for the town hall. This would help provide 15,000 for that work. Questions or comments? Discussion? Yes, sir. Um, I just was noticing on the warrant that it wasn't a finance committee recommendation for a lot of these items and it might be helpful just to if there is one at this time to add that in. So the finance committee met on October 10th. My name is Alan Singer. I'm the chair of the finance committee and by unanimous vote for Article 3 we affirm the select board recommendation. Okay, other comments or discussion? Ready to vote? Oh, way in the back. Is this 6,000? we have to match it to get the grant money? Yeah, it's not. Uh, it occurs to me that I am not a registered voter in the town. Do we vote to let him speak? Is there a motion to let Tom Hutchinson, our town administrator, speak? I so move. Mr. Recor makes the motion. Second. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any contrary minded? <laughs> let the record show that Mr. Strigowski voted against having Mr. Hutchinson speak. Go ahead and speak. Uh, this $6,000 is the town match for a state grant of $9,000. Uh, that we haven't gotten yet, but unless we have this approved, there's no use us applying for it. Uh, so the total amount we would be able to spend is 15000 9000 from the state, 6000 matching funds from the town. Other questions or comments? 
Like, oh, yes. Okay. Jim Bosman, Academy Hill, what? What are the, what's on the punch list to, that needs to be done for? We got a prior grant to do a self-evaluation and transition plan. Tom McCarthy was on the committee that, that did that. We received uh, well over 100 items that should be addressed. They go from the very small to the much larger. And we don't yet have an exact prioritization of that, but this would do the majority of the work that was proposed for us as a good faith effort in bringing the town into compliance. We would then have another $10,000 to spend, aside from the lift at Town Hall, which would cost a lot of money, uh, in order to complete the items on that list. I thought it wise not to commit to doing all of them, say, before town meeting. Uh, this is a start on a process which will likely take more than one year. So is any of this at the school, or is it all down at, like, town office, or the garage, or what, what are we... Where is this work needed? Uh, we got reports on the town office, the town hall, and the Conway Grammar School. This money is intended for the town office and the town hall. Um, the grammar school has its own maintenance and improvement program. Um, obviously, if there's, if there's something uh, that is easy to do at the school, we can, we can do that as part of the project. Um, this is, again, a start. And it's not, in t it w um, this money uh, I had not intended to go to the grammar school for. They have their own capital improvements program. So let me ask you again, what kind of work are we going to get with this money? Is this uh, doors? Is this bathrooms? Is this brain? Yes. What is this? Yes. <laughs> it is doors. It is bathrooms. Uh, it, it, it is the removal of barriers. It's the widening of doorways. It's uh, everything that you see in a modern building that our old buildings don't have. Obviously, cutting a new doorway, as opposed to designing it that way in the first place, costs a good deal of money. Um, again, outside of the lift, the total improvements were $25,000, and uh, that's actually less than I was expecting. Of course, I would also like a lift, but more on that later. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? Ready to vote? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Is there a motion on Article 4? Mr. Moderator, I move to pass over Article 4. It's been moved to pass over Article 4. Is there a second? Okay, comment. no discussion. Comment? No, no discussion on a motion to... Uh, oh, okay. All those in favor of passing over Article 4 signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. All right, is there a motion on Article 5? Mr. Moderator, I move that the town transfer from free cash for bills from a prior fiscal year. $451.36 for water received as an emergency procurement after the tornado, $29.79 for office supplies envelopes, $209.35 for police department fuel, $136.95 for police department clothing, for a total of $827.45. Is there a second? What happens if the, the town votes this down? <laughs> Comment. Funds of these items are not encumbered at the end of June, the usual process for reserving prior fiscal year funds. This is normal every year. We have usually have a few items that we need to, uh, prior year items that we need to pass. Any further discussion? Is this a nine tenths vote? Yes, it yes. is. Yes, nine tenths vote. Yes. Yeah. So, show of cards. All those in favor, raise your cards right up. Hi. And let's have the counters count. <laughs> let's, let's do another one. Any opposed? Any opposed? Hold your hand cards up if you're opposed. 
Mr. Moderator, I move that the town establish a revolving fund for Medicaid reimbursements by amending the town's general bylaws to include a new section revolving funds as follows and to become effective July 1, 2018. Is there a second? Second. Okay, so an amendment of the town's general bylaws is just a majority, is that right? Zoning bylaws are uh, is, is the, uh, the two thirds vote, but general bylaws just means right. okay. Discussion. You want to explain this? Is, this? this is just a revolving fund. It's it's oh, it is a bylaw. Sorry, but it's the general bylaw. Yeah. So it's majority vote. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. The the town shall have a Medicaid revolving fund under Massachusetts General Law Chapter Forty Four Section Fifty Three E and one half to receive funds from school Medicaid reimbursements for the purpose of paying related expenses. This fund shall be under the control of the treasurer collector. The accountant shall include a report on its activity in the annual town report. This has been requested by the treasurer collector as it would be more efficient than the current system facilitating the management of this account. We currently pay an administrative fee for managing the funds, which we would save under this system. Point of clarification. Uh, what uh, the select board chair read as the motion and the first point of clarification should be taken together as the motion. So that the motion is that the town establish a revolving fund for Medicaid reimbursements by amending the town's general bylaws to include a new section revolving funds as follows and to become effective July 1st, 2018. The town shall have a Medicaid revolving fund under Mass General Laws Chapter 44, Section 53, E and a half to receive funds from school Medicaid reimbursements for the purpose of paying related expenses. This fund shall be under the control of the treasurer collector. The accountant shall include a report on its activity in the annual town report. That's the bylaw. Okay, any, any questions or further discussion? Yes, sir. No. What are related expenses? The question is what are our related expenses in, in the uh, and what you just read, you said related expenses. Those are uh, expenses that are incurred from Medicaid. Can you explain a little more? Yeah. I'm the treasurer and collector, Jan Warner. So Can you please I speak louder, Jan. Sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let me go up front. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> Jan Warner, treasurer and collector, and I requested this account because we currently pay administrative fees for our, our Medicaid reimbursements. And those fees are paid out of our health insurance budget, which isn't really the right place for it to be. So we get the reimbursement, we pay the fees out of this account. Right now, that's the only thing intended. There'll be leftover money, and the town will get to vote each year on how they expend that money whether they want to return it to the school or have another purpose for it. Any questions for Jan while she's still standing up there? Ready to vote? Oh, no question. Go ahead. This is like kids that are getting services, like physical therapy, Correct. that kind of thing, right? Yes. Okay. Any other questions? Ready to vote? For the majority vote, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Unanimous. Is there a motion on Article 7? Mr. Moderator, I move that the town amend section four under town officers, boards, and committees of its general bylaws to reduce the number of finance committee members to five as printed in the warrant. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? There are currently six members of the finance committee required in the town bylaws. The finance committee has had trouble reaching quorum at their meetings. 
Uh, there should be an odd number of members on any committee so as to provide some direction to the town instead of a tie vote. Any, any additional discussion or questions about dropping the Finance Committee down from six members to five? Yes. What's the Finance Committee's recommendation? <laughs> <laughs> so we did not, actually, actually did not reach a recommendation. Uh, <laughs> we save a decision. Okay. No recommendation, one way or the other. Yes, sir. I'm confused. Why was it six then? If, if this is something that you know is known that you have to have an odd number. Somebody screwed up in the past, or they didn't. They didn't want an odd number. They were happy to have it three and three. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is Jim Bosman, former finance committee chair. We tried to put it up to seven last year, and it got shot down. So I, I think that John tabled it or something. So. This is what happens. Okay. <laughs> Any other questions? Ready to vote? All those in favor of moving the Finance Committee number down from six members to five, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Uh, that carries. That's a majority vote because it's also a general bylaw. Yeah. Is there a motion on Article 8? Mr. Moderator. Yes. I move that the town approve the bylaw introduced by a citizen petition printed as Article 8 in the warrant. This is a general bylaw, so it's a majority vote. Is that right, Tom? You agree? Is there a second to that motion? Second. Discussion? Yes, sir. Yes. I'm Nelson Schubert. I'd like to read a statement. Okay. For uh, those of Use you the who microphone, just make oh, sure okay. Yep. Can everyone hear me now? Yes. For those of you who wish to learn about the Conway Safe Community Bylaw or to express your views uh, on either side of this issue, thank you for being here. Two weeks ago, I attended a press conference dealing with the detention and deportation of Lucio Perez. Mr. Perez is an undocumented resident who has lived and worked in Springfield for 18 years. He came to the U.S. to escape violence in his home country of Guatemala. He married a U.S. citizen and had three children who are also U.S. citizens. Until his arrest, he worked as a landscaper during the day and tended to his children at night while his wife worked in a factory. Mr. Perez is not a criminal or a rapist. In fact, he has never been arrested. He is active in his community and his church. Since 2009, Mr. Perez has regularly checked in with the immigration authorities and was allowed to stay in this country as part of, of a prior organization system that allowed immigrants who were, not de who were deemed not dangerous to remain in the country. That program was ended by the current administration and deportations have gone up 40% in contrast to promises made by the administration about focusing on bad people for deportation. A good deal of this 40% increase is because immigration officials um, have preyed on law-abiding uh, individuals like Mr. Perez who are in their system. The real criminals and rapists are harder to find. They don't generally register with ICE. One of the many comments I've heard about the work of our Safe Community uh, Committee is that it's unfortunate that we've chosen to bring this issue before the voters at a time when people are so divided. Quite frankly, I'm surprised to hear this from people on both sides of this issue. It makes me wonder if my neighbors are really willing to look the other way and advocate responsibility for the actions of our political leaders with regards to this very important issue. This town meeting represents the purest form of democracy in existence. And the fact that each one of you is here tonight to question, discuss, learn, argue, and vote for or against this bylaw means that you accept the responsibility that comes from participating in our democracy and in doing so, send a message to every politician on a national, state, and even a local level that says, yes, we approve of your, of your position on immigrants and immigration enforcement, or no, what you are doing is wrong, and you're not doing it on my behalf or the majority of the citizens of our little town, Conway, Massachusetts. Another comment I've heard is that this bylaw, it will have little effect yeah, except to tell our police department how to do its job. Given that we not have a holding cell here in Conway, 
It is true that we do not hold people in detention and therefore are not currently likely to be in a position to honor civil detainer requests. However, that does not mean that this process for compliance with detainer requests will not change. It also does not mean that the federal government will not offer financial incentives uh, in lieu of unenforceable threats to withhold federal funding. Currently, the Conway Police Department does not have a written policy on how to deal with detainer requests. It also does not have a policy to prevent an officer from informing federal authorities when a visitor or passerby who has been stopped for traffic infraction is suspected of being undocumented. Even if we had such policies in force uh, in writing without a bylaw, those policies could change at any time. Our bylaw, if enacted, would become a law. And every department in every community in the Commonwealth is charged with enforcing bylaws and ordinances that were approved by citizens or their representatives. In addition, our committee went to great lengths to craft this bylaw in such a way to make it more applicable to law enforcement here in Conway. We also requested a meeting and met with Ken Kieferman to solicit his input. Even before that meeting, we modified our draft bylaw to make it more acceptable. Our initial draft included provisions about the so-called Muslim registry, which was stricken because of concerns about gun registration and renewals. Another provision that required the police to have stopped a vehicle with an unlicensed operator to give the operator an opportunity to arrange for a properly licensed person to drive the vehicle was also removed. And finally, a provision fashioned after the Amherst bylaw that required the police to file a written compliance report on the request of three registered voters was also eliminated. Finally, I've heard that this, this bylaw is described as a feel-good bylaw. For the past five days, I followed the plight of a 10-year-old girl who has been currently held in detention after going to emergency surgery in San Antonio, te Texas. Turns out her parents were also undocumented for this. They brought Rosa Hernandez into the country when she was three months old. The ambulance carrying Rosa to a hospital was stopped by an immigration checkpoint. And after her surgery, immigration officials staked out her hospital room while she recovered. <clears throat> now Rosa is being held in a juvenile detention center and her parents are unable, uh, unable to visit her for fear of being deported. Rosa's father, who works as a day laborer, was also under the, the supervision of immigration authorities. No doubt most of us find Rosa Hernandez's situation unsettling or even heart-wrenching. For many, Rosa's story has been a turning point. How is it possible that our government is willing to use a 10-year-old girl as bait to entrap and deport her undocumented but otherwise law-abiding parents? How is it possible that our dreamers, many of whom are high-achieving college students, who enroll in the DACA program are now threatened with deportation? These kids are untrapped because like Lucio Perez, they thought they had an agreement with immigration authorities. However, unlike Lucio, they were actually promised a pathway to citizenship. They provided their family history and contact information to the same government that is now using them as bargaining chips to build the Mexican wall. These kids are not bargaining chips. Like Lucio Perez and his wife and children and Rosa Hernandez and her family, they are human beings. They all believe in the promise of America. They all believe in the integrity of the country they are working so hard to become a part of. This is not a feel-good bylaw. In fact, it's not enough. Thank you, Nelson. A lot of what Nelson said is true. A lot of what Nelson said doesn't apply in Conway. Uh, I'm strongly opposed to this bylaw, and the reason for that is I don't want to make Conway a beacon for people to come here and think they are safe from our law enforcement officers or from our town officials to be reported if they are in the country illegally. Uh, certainly, we don't know who's coming through town. We don't know whether they're criminals. We don't know whether they're gang members, drug dealers. Um, Terrorists? Okay. <laughs> by, by, by passing this law, I think we're just opening ourselves up to 
a tremendous amount of possibilities that we don't want. I'm sure the people that, that signed this uh, petition to put this warrant article on are very well intentioned, but I don't think this is for our town of 1,900 people spread over 37 and a half miles. And I would strongly, uh, again, suggest we vote this down. Good evening. I'll try to keep this short. Those of you who stayed up last night watching the World Series, I know you're tired. <laughs> It's true, I did meet with the two members of the committee who sponsored this article. I listened to their explanation of the article. I then asked them if they could explain to me the need for this bylaw within our community. They looked at each other and there was silence. Again, I said, if you want my support on this bylaw, you must explain the need. After a long pause, one member finally said, I feel like we have to do something. I don't think anybody would argue with that. But I'm not sure that this is it. After a short discussion about the need of, or lack thereof of this bylaw, the committee explained if they were successful in passing similar bylaws in the smaller communities, that it would send a message to Boston. Some of the committee's concerns are the costs which would be incurred by the town by detaining individuals. Conway, nor any other small community in Franklin or Hampshire County, including the town of Amherst, detain or hold individuals. They are brought to the jails in their respective counties for holding. The committee also stated that the town of Conway did not receive funding directly from the federal government. Therefore, such funds could not be withheld. This statement is clearly false and misleading since many of the federal government grants are administered through the Department of Justice. I know that because I have written those grants. And other block grants are federal monies administered through the state government. While attending a two-day police chief's training in Norwood, Mass. on September 20th and 21st, I had the opportunity to speak with our Lieutenant Governor, Karen Polito. She explained that the Governor's Office had filed a bill pertaining to many of the same issues within this proposed article. That bill is working through the legislative process. This is clear, clearly a topic that should be decided at the state and federal level and not as a local bylaw issue. I have been employed by the Town of Conway as a police officer since 1981 and have had the honor and privilege of serving as a police chief since 1990. In that time, I have seen many town meeting articles and or bylaw discussions that have created controversy, but none have produced the angered phone calls or residents stopping me on the road to express their disgust as this article has. Now remember, I chaired the Highway Garage Committee. <laughs> <laughs> the adoption of a town bylaw should not be based on emotion, but based on a need. This bylaw serves no real purpose and only creates division within our community, often based on political ideology. Our police officers should not be put into a position to follow a town bylaw over a sworn oath to the laws of our state government. As a chief law enforcement officer in our town, I am disturbed that my officers and myself could be pawns in a political chess match. In a recent conversation with a federal judge discussing a variety of possible scenarios surrounding this topic, we both came to the same conclusion. There does not appear to be any sense of urgency to adopt such a bylaw as the SJC has a decision rendered on the Lund case on July 24th of 2017, and the state legislator is addressing this same issue. Therefore, I would like to make a motion to table this article. Second. second. Okay, there's been a motion made to table the article and second. We're going to vote by show of cards. All those in favor of tabling the motion, which effectively defeats the motion for the time being. Raise your cards up high. Counters, if you go and count them. Hold it up if you want to stop all discussion and just not vote on this at all. You're right. This is in terms of money for this, which are not by us, which do happen right away. Yeah. So. This is a majority vote.
Keep them up. We haven't got agreement yet. Both, both sides. This side over here, my right side, can put them down. Are you guys in agreement? 25. Yeah, 25 is perfect. Okay, so 25 plus 34, 59. All those who do not want to table but want to go forward and vote the issue, hold your hand. Cards up high and counter count. And we'll either further discuss or vote if you want to do that. Either one, hold your hand. Cards up. This side can go down. Okay, 28 and 28 is 56. So 59 voted to table and 56 voted out to the table and the table. All right, are there any other motions for the uh, meeting? There are no other motions, Mr. Moderator. Is there a motion to adjourn? Is there a second? We are adjourned. Thank you, Moderator.